y'all farmer dre back at us on the beautiful day here on the farm but i want to thank everybody for stopping by if you guys haven't already go and hit that subscribe button go and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever i do upload a video we are out here in the high tunnel this morning and i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the wood stove and everything that goes with it so let's go ahead and get started so if you guys watch my other videos i promise to you guys i'm gonna make a complete video on our wood stove and how we heat the soil and everything and the time has come i'm gonna go ahead and do that today but real quick before we get started i want to go ahead and show you guys the tomato plants so we are in a high tunnel and the difference between a greenhouse and a high tunnel and this is my definition farmer dre's definition between a greenhouse and a high tunnel in a greenhouse you are growing th everything in pots and with soilless uh, mixtures. So if you're growing a hydroponic system, that's a soilless mixture. So I'd call that a greenhouse uh, on tables like we do in our germination greenhouse there. So to me, a greenhouse is when you're growing everything without soil. In a high tunnel is where you're growing the crop in the mother soil, even though we have the entire setup like a greenhouse. We got the heaters, we got fans, we got, you know, the curtains that go down. So that is Farmer Dre's definition of greenhouse versus high tunnel. So that's why I call it a high tunnel because we're growing everything in the soil. But technically, it's a greenhouse because, I mean, there is no difference in the frame. It's just in the difference of how you're growing, the different growing methods that you are applying. So we are using drip irrigation. So, I mean, it's very similar to a greenhouse it's, it is a greenhouse but we're growing everything in the mother soil that is originally here if you guys can remember the size of these tomato plants when we first planted them now we have some open blossoms here and we got some more flower clusters coming so eight weeks from now we'll be harvesting and we have a lot of a lot a lot of flower buds getting ready to pop open here so that's good good news for us i gotta come through here later on this week and start staking them up and tying them up so we planted three rows of the big dinas. They are a greenhouse indeterminate type tomato. And um, I mean, I remember my first year growing that. So we'll figure that out how that works. Then we have a row of the Carolina Gold, which is a yellow tomato, and three rows of the Red Deuce. Red Deuce are a high tunnel variety. So it was bred specially to be grown under plastic and in the soil. So big dinas are greenhouse types. So a lot of Farmers use them for uh, hydroponic systems. I talked to other farmers that grow them in the soil. So they're um, they're mainly a uh, a greenhouse variety, but we could grow them in here as well. And then Carolina Golds and the Red Deuce are a high tunnel variety specifically. So whenever you do plant your tomatoes, make sure that you plant varieties that are made to be grown under these conditions because whenever the breeders mix and crossbreed varieties, they always, you know, that's the thing. If they grow them out in the field or they grow them in the greenhouses or in the high tunnels. So make sure that the varieties you choose are the right ones for you. Alrighty, so on the wood stove here, uh, we went ahead and built this all ourselves. We're not professional welders, as you guys heard me say in past videos, but we're redneck engineers. So I consider myself an engineer. We're on the redneck side. If it works, great. So, <laughs> so whenever you make a wood stove, we went ahead and loaded up. We, we load up the wood from the outside so that none of the fumes come inside the, the high tunnel here. Then you get other problems with the wilt and other, other disease issue with the plants. So over here, this is where we just cut a piece of uh, uh, a square there in the sheet metal. And I went ahead and put this piece of sheet metal so no fumes or any smoke could come in here. And then let me just go ahead and walk outside and show you guys that. It's a cold rainy day and I didn't mention this, but here in Southwest Missouri, our last frost free date on average is about may 1st last week of april may 1st so we try to have ripe tomatoes in the high tunnel here before we even start planting out in the field that kind of gives you guys a perspective of you know the different heating methods we have but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and uh this is a door that my dad and i and adrian invented here so it's got the little flap there that goes down the door handle and this is the stove inside that's the hot coals that we burnt last night and uh, this is it. So we just load up from the outside. And you can see here, I need to buy some of that, that uh, rope that goes around the door there. And this uh, sheet metal gets burnt a little. So no fumes get inside of there. So, uh, yep. And we usually burn about two bins a night. So these are 20 bushel apple crates. So they hold about a thousand pounds of apples. I'm not sure how heavy they are with wood. But we probably burn through, I don't know, 
it's a lot. I mean, a few five, six, seven hundred, maybe a thousand pounds of wood a night. So this thing right here burns a lot of wood. So with wood stoves, if you guys are familiar, we, uh, you know, the more surface you have, the more heat is going to repel out into that particular area. So we want to go ahead and load up the uh, the wood in there and then it burns nice and hot and then the smoke comes up through here and then into this uh, pro old air tank. So it's a 60 gallon air tank and then the smoke keeps on continuing on here and then goes out there. And this is where it gets exciting because you guys see all these bars here and I'll explain that here in a bit. Come to this side right here. This is where the excitement happens. So what we did is uh, we try and make it our own style of geothermal heating. I mean, it's radiant heat. And, uh, you know, geothermal is whenever you're grabbing the earth's heat and pumping it inside the greenhouse to warm your greenhouse. There's a few few videos here on this platform on YouTube where some guy in Nebraska is growing oranges and whatnot all winter long. But here we're just growing tomatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and explain our system here. So we have a tank. It, it usually needs more water than this. But we have the sub pump there. The pump pumps in cold water out of the tank there from the return into this system here so this these pipes just kind of zigzag all around through there you guys can see that like that so we just got to um, we just drilled through there and put these pipes to the 90s and the pipes swiggle back and forth the water does until it gets burning hot and then we have a temperature gauge right now the stove isn't working but we like to pump anywhere from 90 to 120 uh, degree water down into the soil and in the soil here we have a three quarter inch pex pipe and when if you guys watch my planting tomato videos looking back now we should have just went the entire thing with the uh black pipe but hey you live and learn but it still does a really good great job of radiating the heat and warming up that soil so we have uh, a thousand foot of pex pipe throughout the high tunnel here underneath the soil about 12 inches deep 12 to 16 inches deep and one thing that we should have done and looking back now i mean whenever we first did this we had no idea what we were doing we were just we just made it work so we should have got underneath the pipe we should have put a piece of foam just a regular sheet foam so that the the all the heat could come up instead of you know splitting half having some of it could go down some of it could come up so that's one thing if we were to do something different is to put some of that foam underneath there so all the heat could come up but still if i take a, a soil probe the soil is probably 55 60 degrees right now in in march it's the first week of march and the soil temperature is already that warm just because of this system right here and talking to other growers that we we looked around and talked to other farmers they used a two inch pipe metal pipe to go underneath the ground and it's expensive at first but long term if you're growing tomatoes it, it pays itself off so we kind of went the cheaper way and it's going to bite us in the butt later on but i wish we would have gone with the all black metal pipe to go down in the soil but hey this system still works so it's like i said we're redneck engineers here and we um configured up this entire system ourselves so then the, the pex pipe comes back here and returns so this water here that's coming out is pretty warm and uh you know obviously it cools off a little because going through all the pipe because you lose some of that heat but this is it this is our radiant heat system i would call it a geothermo system but it's not we're, we're actually heating with uh with the wood stove instead of using the heat from earth to heat up our greenhouse and that pump there puts out about 10 psi of pressure i think it's a three uh, a third horsepower i believe sub pump so it's a third horsepower you could go a little bigger for some more pressure but the thing is if you have boiling hot water in here it's going to automatically push through the system i remember back in the summer whenever it was uh no this was last last year the, I, the sub pump wasn't working because it was already like March, but it got cold. So then I turned on the uh, the wood stove and didn't plug in the sub pump because it was already like April. The soil temperature was plenty warm. And then by the time when I came back to fill up the wood stove, the, the water was flowing without the sub pump going. So you just pretty much need an inlet with boiling hot water and it would automatically just push through the entire system because that hot water builds compression or pressure or something and then it just pushes through there so the pump helps you know maneuver the water more frequently more often but in all reality you know you don't really need that pump but it, it sure helps out with that sub pump there this is the whole contraption here it is the uh diy farmer dray version of a uh radiant heat slash heating the soil i don't know it's not a 
it's not perfect but hey it works and we're able to grow these tomato plants it's pretty healthy and uh pretty nicely so um yeah not too bad not too bad and that's the thing you just learn live and learn as the years go on and you know after so many years you kind of figure out hey what what could i've done better to uh to perfect this but hey it's just part of it that's that's part of farming and that's the beautiful thing about farming is it's not the same thing year after year you always can continue progressing learning and you're always trying to find things that work with this wood stove burning at max capacity full the hottest i ever got it was about 30 degrees warmer than the outside temperature so it works pretty good you know this time of year you know it the low temperatures are in you know mid 20s you know up in the, in, in the low 30s so i'm able to keep the, the high tunnel here about 65 degrees all night you know some it just kind of fluctuates but with the wood stove here i gotta wake up two to three times a night to come put wood on the fire so that's why we went ahead and invested into a propane heater up here so i come through here right before it gets dark and turn on the wood stove and i come back about midnight before i go to sleep and fill it up full and then by the time it burns off then the propane heater kicks in this is a 250,000 BTUs per hour heater. And the funny thing is the night we set this up, it was about, it was I think 54 degrees in here. And by the time we, we came in here and tied up all the wires and everything with zip ties, it got up to 65 degrees like in two, maybe three minutes, maybe three minutes. So this thing really puts out some heat and it, it's a propane heater and it really burns pr through propane. So the, the night we set it up, I wanted to see how much propane it burnt so I did not turn on the wood stove at all just to see how how much propane this thing would burn. I think the low for that night was like 32. So, I mean, it, was, it got cold, but it burnt through 10% propane in our 250 gallon tank there. So it burnt through about 25 gallons of propane in one night. So that's why I'm kind of glad we do more of the hybrid. We do more of the, the, the wood stove up until about one, two in the morning and then this propane kicks in. So last night, I just checked right before I started making this video, we only burnt through 2% propane with the wood stove and the propane. So, I mean, it actually helps out and then I get a good night's, good night's of rest. So. so that is our wood stove explained. And I've gotten a few questions about how the wood stove works exactly and everything like that. So this is it right here. It's a 200, it's a 300 gallon propane tank, a uh, 60 gallon air tank. We made the adjustments there and just welded a six inch pipe. And then we should have gone with the eight inch pipe completely, but that's an eight inch there. So it gives plenty, uh, of uh power there so alrighty, y'all so this is going to be pretty much it for today like i said if you guys have any questions or comments go ahead and put them down in the description in the, in the comment section below or any better ideas that we we could have done to improve this system like i said it works but i wish we would have uh, done things a little differently but hey we're just stuck with it now and we can't really do much about it but it still works these tomatoes in here are uh, growing, so that's the best thing about it. I got to come through here, like I said, and string these up and stake these up. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be pretty much it for today. If you guys haven't already, go and hit that subscribe button. Go in and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever I do upload a video. I want to say thanks for watching up to this point. You guys have a good day, and we will see you next time. <music>